Hi, this is Jill, and I'm in my studio playing around, and I want to show you uh, some neat, neat technique I've just been doing for making cards. This is Tim Holtz Distress Ink. The one I'm using happens to be tea dye. And we're going around the edge of the card. This is an A2 size card. I also like using vintage photo, scattered straw, uh, different colors of inks of the distress inks of Tim Holtz for this technique. I like this because it's real easy to create a card. I just got these. This is very cool. This is called a uh, rock mount and it's an acrylic block that you can put large stamps on. I got these over at Priceless. I love them. Uh, it's perfect for what I want to do with it right now. I'm going to add some darker brown ink on that to show you what I want to do. Here's a vintage sepia Sukuniko ink, and that's what I'm going to use to put on my stamp. And I'm just holding it up and stamping it across with the vintage sepia. And this is way cool because it rolls. And here we go. And I'm going to bring it over here and roll it again. And that's the base of the card. Very cool. I love it. And uh, then I fold it. I'm going to keep cleaning the area off here because I don't want to get my card full of ink. It's one thing you always have to be doing. Constantly cleaning your work area if you want to keep your cards clean. And dry them off with paper towel so you don't get your cards wet. Okay, I want to fold this in half. I love how it looks already. It's beautiful. It's got a really cool look to it. And that's my base right there. And uh, now, what I love about it is I can use my images. And I love my collage pack images. This is just a way cool way to use them. And my paper book combined. And I'm going to pick... I can pick anything. Any, any, anything. Let me figure out what I want here. Let me see. Something kind of easy to cut out. Because I'm doing it on a video. I could literally use almost any of these. They're perfect for what I want to do. I love these pictures. This is the Fashions Collage Pack by TJ Designs. I've picked a lot of different images and put them in one collage pack and it happens to be called Fashion. I think I'll use her because she's kind of cool. And I like to use little scissors when I cut these out because I don't fussy cut very often. I'm going to cut the image out with regular scissors first. I also love this image, so I'm going to cut that out. For the next card, I'll show you a couple. I love it. These two, two gals driving. <laughs> They're way cool. We'll cut them both out. And I'm not going to go crazy fussy cutting here because I just tend to not... The little scissors really do help, and I've been told, and I do think it's very true that if you move your, oops, yikes, got a juggler. If you move your paper instead of your scissors, you uh, make it a little easier on yourself. I may not be cutting it perfect, but I'm trying really hard to not leave any black around the image. Okay. This is really different for me because I don't usually ever fussy cut anything. 
But I, I like it because that's the hardest this card is, is right there is fuzzy cutting that. Now what I would like to use for the backgrounds, we'll set this one aside. What I really like using for the background is my paper book. And I happen to have one right here. And that's what makes this so fun for me too is I get to use all, all my product except I do use that background stamp which is another company. It is actually by Impression Obsession and I got a couple of them. And uh, excuse me, I had to reach over. I didn't know if I lost my video. Uh, so I got a couple of these. And this is another one. It's Dots. I'm going to be using that one. And uh, these stamps are really cool. They fit that big, huge amount. And they do a real quick job of putting background on. And the next thing I'm going to do is... I need to shut this Photoshop off because it's going to... There, sorry about that. Um... Next thing I'm going to do is pick out a paper for the front. Now I could use one of these. Mm, they're way cool. And they're kind of uh, already collaged somewhat, which is really cool. I love that. You can make your own too, but for the for a quick and easy card, you can use my collage pieces. And I'm taking my image and seeing, hey, what fits here? What looks good? Hmm. It all looks good. <laughs> I like the text. I'm just going to use something with some text on it. I like that part. And for this, I think it's really important to have a paper cutter, which most of you know I don't usually use a paper cutter either. So I'm getting a little out of my elements here. So here's a paper cutter. I think it's important because you want to have a nice straight edge this paper once you put it on the card. I'm going to use this because I kind of like that top. And maybe I'll make us a couple options. Give us a couple other pieces so we can play around a little bit. See, I'm just cutting them in strips. And if it's just one piece of paper that I used, and I could use anything, could use part of that. Part of the other clash pieces in the book. I just took one page. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is take part of this paper and I want it for a background. I don't want it to be too busy because I want the image to just pop a little bit. So I might pull it over here. I like that. If you want it to be a little more decorative, you could pull it over here. I like that too. Hmm. That's a little distracting. I could keep some of it in to add some color. I think I'll do that. Okay, that's where I'm going to make my decision to cut. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and glue it on. And I am the kind that likes to make things easy. So I use a glue stick and uh, I can't wait to try the new collage glue sticks. Priceless is getting the collage glue sticks in. I've always been using these Pioneer um, photo glue sticks and I love them. Some glue sticks work a lot better than others so we all know that and these seem to work great. I'm going to put this right here. Nothing perfectly exact. I'm just going to put it there. Flip it over. And cut. And put this over and cut it. Card's almost done. <laughs> One thing I like about this is you can put about any image with my papers out of my packs and they go really well. Okay, I'm going to glue her down, put glue on her, pretty much all around the edge so I don't get any little flappy paper pieces later. I'm going to put her over here. 
And then the next thing I do is I just take any, 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 any type of a stamp that has a word on it. Um, anything, like if you want to write happy birthday, you could do happy birthday. If you want to write uh, thank you, you can write thank you. Um, expect great things. That could be like almost in a, a congratulations or could be... Um, could be anything before you could put gratitude I like gratitude I probably would have made this a little bit smaller if I wanted to put that big word but let's go ahead and put something that fits in there perfect like mm. But let's just put expect great things. That's a small stamp that fits in there. And I like to always stamp in black when I do my main stamp. Well, not always, but this time I'm going to stamp in black. And I'm going to put it right here. Expect great things. And believe it or not, to me, the card is done. Put something on the back fun if you want to. Um, it could be like a graduation. Or mm, any kind of card. And so the back, I'm going to put Reach for the Sky. And I like that. Expect great things, Reach for the Sky. And that's the card, and you can put your message inside. And I'm going to do another one. And they're, they're all going to be kind of like the same. And look how fun it is. You just use the paper book, little swatches out of the paper book. Um, and then you use images and put that background stamp on, and you've got these great great little cards you can make up a dozen of them so quickly so I'm going to do a couple without talking and just show them to you now that you've seen this little um, demonstration you know what I'm doing I'm putting in backgrounds and I'll be using backgrounds with distress inks and you all probably know most of the colors of Tim Holtz distress inks if you don't you can go online and look he's got a lot of different colors I'm going to use blue and if I use blues or sometimes I'll come in and, and use a Sukuniko um, Versafine uh, blue deep lagoon to put on on top with the uh, stamp itself once I do the distressing. So I'm going to do a couple different things and um, just kind of have fun while you watch. Alrighty? Enjoy. Maybe we can do a class on this. I'd love to do one in my studio if you girls want to do it. Okay? So let me know.